he considered Lyle the blow off, not his hard worker. He wanted to not have to do his schoolwork and still try to get A's. He wanted Daddy to come and fix things for him. Eric, Jose considered a crybaby. He wasn't as masculine as Jose. And no matter how well they did at certain things, it was never enough for Jose. Unless you were the workaholic badass that Jose Menendez was, you weren't enough for him. During the 1970s, the Menendez family lived in the Ivy League University town of Princeton, New Jersey, about 50 miles from New York City, where Jose worked. They graduated to a home that reflected their wealth and status, as Jose pushed his way to the top of every corporate ladder he stepped on. He took no prisoners. If you did not meet his deadlines and his expectations, he would fire you like that. He would take pleasure in denying you a Christmas bonus or vacation or whatever. He enjoyed humiliating people and, and uh, watching them suffer and grovel in front of him because he was a person that had so much power. And he was the same at home. He sat at the dinner table and had these quiz sessions where he would quiz his two boys on current events, historical events, and if they didn't know the answers, he would get very upset at them. The pressure was extremely high. This was not just a family sitting around the dinner table uh, having fun. If you didn't know the answer, you were in trouble. ambitions for his sons. They would go to the best universities, they would shine academically, and they would excel at sport. Jose hired a top coach to turn his sons into professional tennis players. Lyle was ten, Eric was eight. Right. He controlled the whole situation in many ways. Rather than just come and observe the coaching that I was giving, he would come on court with a list of requirements that he wanted me to work on that day. And oftentimes, he would actually go on the court and start giving instruction to Lyle himself. Lyle and Eric practiced most days of the week, arriving before school at 6 in the morning and going back in the evening for extra coaching. I think these boys were pushed more than any two kids that I've ever seen. One night they were leaving at 10 o'clock, and I made a joke. I said, Jose, you guys leaving so soon? I met just the opposite. And he said, and he didn't smile, and he said, yes, uh, Lyle has homework to do now. And he was 10 years old, so he was going to go home at 10 o'clock at night and do the homework. I don't think there was a great balance in their life with other fun things to do, just growing up as young boys. I don't think they had those experiences. Had succeeded by hard work and sacrifice, and he was determined that his sons would follow his path. Really? Is that what he was determined? Yeah. So they were in practice by 6 a.m., in school all day, and at home at the dinner table. He made sure that wasn't pleasant. Probably had an ulcer over it. I can't imagine the anxiety of dinner. And then there was more practice. And then homework. And we all know what else. It's in the cousin's letter. Did you know that little Eric had to go to the emergency room and a doctor said that there was damage to his throat from oral sex? How did they get him back after that? Money. Unless you got a different answer for me.
All I can say is money. Friday, during the day, the maid was there, floor. I assume the maid was there. Okay, so you had no reason to believe that she wasn't there at the house? No. So you weren't afraid to go back to the house? We didn't want to go back to the house. This is where all the things were happening were inside the house, and that's just the last place we wanted to, to be that day. We certainly didn't want to go there to, to, to talk about things. We just wanted to stay out for the day. I don't know why that was my mindset, but I just wanted to stay away from the house for the day. And you indicated that you actually made the purchase of the shotgun from the big five store in San Diego. Yes, that's what I found out. And that uh, you testified that the uh, the lady helping you uh, pulled the shotgun out of the box. She took the plug out of one of the shotguns, correct? Yeah, I remember she was showing us. It was a it was a long box with white stuff on it, and she was showing us the gun and she was taking it apart. And I remember the tube underneath. She either pulled out or unscrewed out, and. Uh, and she mentioned something about a stopper that if you took out, you were able to put more uh, shells in. Do you remember Amanda Adams um, testifying in this trial? I remember she was here. I didn't recognize her. That uh, you simply came up and asked for the two shotguns. She knew what kind of guns you wanted. Yeah, she... Uh, and that uh, she didn't pull it out of a box and she didn't uh, display it for you and demonstrate it for you. Was she lying? No, I, I don't think she was lying. I don't think she would come up here lying. She also testified that it was at 8.30 at night, though, and that could not have been possible. And why is that? Because it was daytime when I walked into the store. And it was in the morning that you set out for San Diego, correct? I'm really uh, not sure exactly what time you set out for San Diego, but I know it was sometime that morning or maybe at 12 at the latest. Now, after making the purchase and signing uh, your name to the forms, I actually got the Pedro's name to the uh, gun forms. You then took the guns, got into your car, and just immediately headed back for Beverly Hills, correct? I believe so, and I'm really sure. What do you remember now? I remember that we were at the store, and we got back to the Beverly Hills house when it was dark. Exactly what we did in between, I'm not sure. Now you testified before these two juries that during the ride back, I believe you said that your brother was driving once again. Yes. And then you loaded your gun. Yeah, I loaded two shells in the gun. Okay. Now you have indicated that you you never had to pull the plug out of the, the shotgun that you had, correct? No, no, no. You never had to? No. And so when you put in these two shotgun uh, cartridges into your gun on the way home from San Diego, was that all that it would accommodate? No, I assume it would accommodate five or six, but... Why is that? I didn't think that two shotgun shells, I mean, a shotgun would need any more than two shotgun shells if someone was coming at you. It just didn't, it just didn't seem like, it seemed like that was enough. So you, I mean, with the stop in, I believe you can load three. Um, but you know, two seems like, a, two definitely seemed like enough to me at the time. So you, you didn't load it all the way to the maximum, you just put the two in? Yes. At some point, did you see your brother load his shotgun? No, I did not. Never saw that? No. When you got out of the car on that night, the 18th, you indicated that you took your gun out and you went...